What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic Co-op Survival! How you doing bro, you just chilling in your Zamboni? Bro, I am, a, I am top of a chilled lake? like a ice cold coffee related beverage. Why coffee related? Why? I don't know. I was thinking coffee? of like I was thinking of like iced cappuccino. You know, or it's like <laughs> fair enough. Okay. Uh, we got we got some stuff in here. Um, today we're gonna do a great episode. Great episode today. Mm. Good good episode. Uh, yep. You wanna do you wanna tell the good people? Sure. Today we're gonna be doing base building, improving the restaurant, improving some other stuff. And yeah, we're gonna we're possibly gonna getting into some storytelling for you guys. Yeah, we're gonna fix up that tree, that tree over there. Yeah. See that? The see the tree uh... I'm talking about? See that tree? See the See the tree, I'm, see the tree, I'm. Okay, okay, see, we gotta stop doing that, because last time I did that, last time I was shooting at you when you were up there, somebody pointed out in my comments, I actually shot off the fresh sign. <laughs> you could shoot the fresh sign off? Apparently. Apparently the, the fresh sign, yeah, bro, well, that's stupid. Why yeah, would that... it's okay, I have one in my inventory, so we're good. Yeah, okay, that's we'll, good. Uh, we'll replace it. Are you gonna press um, the button? No, I was waiting for you. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do some base building. But like in the last episode, a lot of people pointed yep. out that we were while we were mining, we weren't really mining so much as telling stories. Right. Um And so I figured appropriately for today, since uh, you know we're base building, Cosmo mm -hmm. and I used to live together, and that's Yay. so that's what we're gonna we're gonna talk about our wonderful experiences living together <laughs> in the terrible house. Um, we lived in. I guess the first thing in. we should talk about is uh, how Cosmo and I met. We went to the same university together. Same program, same university. Yeah. Um, you know, struggled through the same. Education it was interesting though because we didn't. We were in like the same classes, but we didn't really talk much. Um, like we didn't. We didn't talk to each other or anything. We nope. didn't really. Um, like we we're really who... friends until like after we like did like, our schooling almost <laughs> yeah like like i don't know like midway through second year why is there a dead body bag here because i died okay I oh died. It's, it's your I stuff died. okay it killed gotcha. me yep yep um so anyway yeah we uh we went to school together uh we both were in the same program all that fun stuff we um didn't really talk much we kind of started hanging out and talking and, and becoming friends when uh cosmo and i i was renting a house on a street and Cosmo started renting a house up the street, and then yep. we would come over and hang out in my uh, in my house, and we would play uh, lots of League of Legends. Lots of League of Legends. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's the that's the sad part is we. It was uh, and it and here's the kicker: we played League of Legends in a room that was like like an six eight feet by foot, four foot, yeah. maybe like it was like a closet. Yeah, it, it was, was literally. Tiny. <laughs> I was renting this basically. When you're a student, you get cheap rentals. And yep. uh, I was renting this extremely cheap place, and as a result, right. my room was basically a closet, which was fine. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, we we played in this tiny little closet. I would have to like sit on my bed, and he would sit at my desk because that's literally if all. You could the, even call it a desk, really. <laughs> yeah, that's all the space we had. Um, it wasn't good. It wasn't. It wasn't that great. But anyway, that's that's where we met. Lots of uh, lots of long nights avoiding exam studying and playing yeah, League of Legends. <laughs> playing lots of League of Legends. So it was it was pretty good. Um, that was fun. And both of our leases were up, and then we were like, well, yeah, I that's guess, right. Our uh, leases were up. We need a new place to live. <laughs> and I had some problems with some people. Uh, yeah, where I, I remember that. Where I lived. Uh, long story. Not not really. Uh, you know, too much to get into. Um, yeah. but. They did. They did sort of wreck my car. Um, someone, someone that I, I, I guess I knew wrecked my car. Did they break into your house as well? Yeah, they broke into my house. That was a different thing. That was they. Yeah, they. Yeah, they, exactly. They broke into like my we house. Said, it's a lot to dive into. <laughs> yeah, it's there's a lot of details. But anyway, they broke into my house and then uh, and then they and then they broke my car window with a rock. So. Yep. Um, we moved out. We moved out of that area because it was like, well, this is a bad neighborhood, and. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's 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 the story. So then Cosmo and I moved in together. Um, yep, moved into this uh, two-story house. Lived on the second story of it. Somebody else lived up downstairs. Yeah, it, it was a two-story disconnected house. It was yeah, um, yeah. Like the top I mean, and bottom. It was connected were... at some point, but they had drywall the entrance. Yeah, it was and... two different two different windows. Um, <laughs> Are you building a target? It's a basketball net. It's a. It looks, that's awesome. It looks like a basketball <laughs> backboard, right? It's you hit the basketball. Oh, you should put a bed or a seat or something there so we can like press e jump and pry and press it. e. I thought about yeah. that, but yeah, whatever. I don't want a bed because I don't want to respawn there every time, right? Fair enough. Fair enough. That was my thought. Um. So anyway, yeah, we moved in the top story of a two-story house. Um, yep. House was 
in rough shape to put it lightly uh yep. is... it was an old house not well taken care of at all so no and the landlord was um i get again it was a cheap house which you know is, is part of the problem when you're a yep. cheap i mean student. it's just it's a student town right so yeah it's like... it was it was whatever <laughs> but the landlord was um a self-proclaimed genius as we'll call it he, a stable genius he, yeah he knew everything man he was whew, he was so smart um yeah so needless to say the house was kept up to that standard which was right like i remember what was it we were getting internet put in Do you remember the internet oh my store? goodness so yeah so the, the internet so the store. internet guy comes right yeah and there wasn't a cable hookup like for the house from the outside it right was, there was just a cable hanging outside of the house yeah so this guy takes a drill and a massive concrete drill bit and just drills from the exterior of the house. Yeah, it was a brick into house. The living room. Brick yeah. house. Just drills right <laughs> through the outside wall. Straight and we're like, uh and then he just patches it with some silicone. He's like, ah, it's fine. It's, we'll just yeah. <laughs> We're like, alright, whatever, it's not our house. But that's like yeah, that's how we got internet, so that was fun. But then we had to explain why there was a hole in the house. Well, there was a hole in the wall. <laughs> it was pretty cool though. So like the entrance to the house you had to come up. In our our entrance, we had a the front door and the mm -hmm. the bottom unit oh, had the no. back door, and when you came up the front door, um, you had to go in through this like uh, basically this little closet hallway area, and then you'd go up the staircase right away, right? Yep. And very tight space. Very tight space. But we had we didn't really have like a living room because your living room was like your kitchen at the top of the stairs. It was all like one That's room. Right. So Cosmo had. You had this old projector, right? You were used oh, to work yeah. for like a projector yep. company. That's right. You used to work for a projector company. You had some military grade projectors. Yeah, these things were like like huge, ridiculously yeah, massive, massive and, and everything else. And I'm uh, pretty sure they heated up the house more than the actual heating system. Yeah, that's did. probably true. <laughs> and then what? We uh we basically hung this like I don't know, like what was it, a shower curtain or something? Yeah, over yeah. The... I think like uh, once in a while we'd buy a new shower curtain, hang up, and we would tape it to the wall. Yeah. Over, uh, over because our we didn't staircase. Have any flat walls. That was the issue. Is the walls were all slanted, so we had to like. Yeah, this was know, taped at an out. angle too. It was like exactly. this weird angle thing going on. <laughs> and we'd watch movies. We'd game on that thing. We'd do all yeah. sorts of uh, fun stuff. Yeah, it was fun times. So that, that was, was that good. house. Um, yep. <laughs> I oh oh I didn't even mention my bedroom, man. What am I doing? Oh my. My bedroom door. was like the highlight the of the door. house. So I yeah I lived in a hobbit hole for like like I don't he know how many. He didn't even have a proper size door. No, my like, door. So like he put this like <laughs> extension because basically it was like the story was this this house was this terrible like old house right and he clearly wanted to like have it as two units to rent maximize more. his profit on it. Right, because yeah. you can't if you rent it as one house you can only charge so much rent for a single house. But if you rent it as two separate units you can make more in rent because you know you can charge the upstairs people a ridiculous price and and the bottom people. A ridiculous price and add them together yep. and you know whatever right then boom your mortgage paid off <laughs> and mortgage is paid off exactly so we had this so he put basically to make the upstairs the upstairs had one bedroom already yep. but to put a second bedroom on it he built this like addition on top of the downstairs kitchen in the back and he and it was like this i don't know who built his maybe he had like so four foot dwarfs building his addition for him or something because everything was tiny <laughs> it was so everything. small like the whole thing was like maybe a six foot ceiling in the middle of the room and then, yeah. then it would like taper down like i remember my monitor window, didn't fit like a like, one foot by two foot window it was yeah so bad this <laughs> tiny little window in the back like and then he had this hobbit door where it was like you literally had to crouch and then like jump down six inches like there was like a six yeah. inch step <laughs> no it wasn't even like the, the floor wasn't even lined up the whole oh, oh my god it was great it was the worst worst door I anyway mean, i lived in that room I had motorcycles in my room. That's true, yeah. <laughs> Our yeah, house was that such sucked. a... That sucked, because literally the only entrance into the house was the stairs, the really tight stairs, so yeah. I literally had to take the motorcycle up the stairs one time. Oh, and then we had the... Um, uh, remember the... You had you had your mopeds, so Cosmo had all these like yep. mopeds and stuff, and then there was the... Um, the the guys who stole your one moped, you remember that? The So, here's the other uh, fun little fact. We lived two literally two doors down from a local hell's angels chapter yeah local a and, local uh, biker gang lived right down the street yeah, from us which yeah. were actually like surprisingly you know like contrary to popular belief were actually really nice guys you know like they weren't really bugging any, i mean i mean, I'm I mean sure uh, let, let's, they weren't let, the nicest let's people just ever, say it but... was a don't ask don't tell sort of policy you just don't exactly you just yeah. you know you say hello you don't bug them nice they don't day. bug you everything's fine yeah right? it's great it's basically so, 
I had my moped out on the front porch for months, right? This thing was out there for months. We didn't have much space. I was like, whatever, it'll be fine. And it's fine. You had and any garbage day, bags, I thought, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. There were like some garbage bags. I had some parts. I had my bike. You know, life was good. And then one day our landlord decided to get some work done on the house. So, Which was like you know, the cheapest labor you could find, by the way. This guy yeah. did not spend money on, on anything. <laughs> exactly. And uh, surprise, surprise, my moped goes missing. You know, my moped gets stolen. Yeah. So I immediately inquire with the construction crew. I'm like, hey, guys, so, you know, I had some stuff there. It's not here. It's been there for a while. What's going on, right? These dudes had the audacity to blame the moped theft on the Hell's Angels. Yeah, a 50 on the biker CC gang. moped that tops out at like 45 kilometers yeah, an clearly, hour. Clearly, clearly the biker gang <laughs> wants your moped, you know. I, I can picture a really burly biker gang kind of guy oh, riding this tiny little moped. Like probably wouldn't even move with the dude on it, you know what I mean? No. Like it, yeah, no no way. That was, that was such so. a good time. That was a bit ridiculous. Yeah. We didn't live in like, I, I mean, we didn't really live in like the worst neighborhood. It wasn't, it was just like close to downtown. So like, yeah, we, we kind of live in right. a city, not like a huge city, but we live in a city and you know, it's, uh, there's like a downtown area and we were, I don't know, within like a walking, you know, 20 minute walk to downtown, 10 minute walk to downtown. So we were like yeah, close enough like to the stuff that you get, you know, the stupid people. The stupid people. I guess to put it nicely, you know what I mean? Oh uh, yeah, the rougher around the edges people. Yeah. So that's just that's just how that was. It wasn't bad though. Like it wasn't the it wasn't the worst place to live. We could have definitely picked worse places. Oh for sure. Yeah, if there we, are definitely worse places to, to live in that one, but Yeah. But anyway, yeah, we lived in that place. Uh that place was great. Uh remember the so there was this, the excavator story. You remember the excavator? Oh, my yeah, you gotta tell them the excavator story. That one was good. The excavator uh, story was a so good one. We had some uh I guess they were planning to expand the road in front of the house yeah. and in order to do so they had to excavate it tear up the existing asphalt but weren't they doing like um, water pipes or something too or some nonsense yeah, it was like yeah they had to move the water pipe as well because it would interfere with the road construction etc etc yeah, so that. they you know long story short they had dug up the road right in front of the house right now it's worth to mention that they also dug up all the entrances the driveways so like yeah, we had you, to park like across the street. Basically, yeah. And like, walk through this like construction zone. It wasn't like yeah. they, they like meshed off the bad areas of the construction zone, but yeah, yeah you had to there walk. There was essentially like, like a one foot like, walkway. like difference between the levels of the ground and your driveway. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> too bad. No. But here's the kicker. The only people that did have a driveway entrance every single oh, yeah, day the were the gang. Hell's Angels. <laughs> the biker gang house, yeah. Yeah, the biker yeah, house. Yeah, so uh, clearly, you know, clearly they, they had some pull with the construction company. Yeah, are you too. surprised? No. I feel no. like I feel like that was one of those conversations where it was like, so we're going to have a driveway every night, right? And they were just like, yep. <laughs> yep, don't worry about don't it. Don't worry much. about it. And that, that's probably how the whole conversation went, I feel. I think yeah. that, was, that was literally it. But anyway, the but excavator the worst story. Part, Back to the excavator. Yeah. The yeah. worst part was when the excavators would start doing their work. Quite literally, everything inside the house, including the house, would shift. Yeah. And it, and it was the most terrifying feeling ever. <laughs> yeah, the whole house wasn't exactly stable. I'm surprised, you know, I still, I still live in the town where this house was. Uh, and I've driven by it occasionally. And surprisingly, it's still standing. I don't know. Surprisingly, it's still standing. I would have yeah. thought it would have fallen over at this point. But yeah, no, it's still up. It looks, uh, it looks, oh, the deck. Oh my God, we have so many. Anyway, the excavator oh, story, goodness. we're getting so far off track. Yep. So the excavator, the they would, else. they would park this excavator. Um, Oh, perfect. You know, I hit the backboard and I stayed in. Look at that. Nice. Anyway, they would park this excavator in front of our house at night, right? And they were digging this big pit. And so they were digging this, I don't know, like water pipes, whatever, but they were digging this pit and they had the excavator parked on like the edge of the pit. And if you guys have ever seen oh, like an yeah, excavator park, this. normally they like park it with like the, the bucket kind of scooped up inside the two treads. So it's just kind of like, you know, the whole arm is like bent inwards or whatever. And uh, anyway, they're, they're parking it on the edge of this pit and we had this really bad rainstorm, like had to be like two days worth of rain. And... <laughs> We were taking bets 
on whether the excavator was going to fall into the pit. Because every day, I swear, by the end of it, the it treads were like, lower lower. they were just like <laughs> half in the pit. Like there wasn't, it was just, there was nothing underneath them. So the water would eat all the dirt away underneath the excavator. And you had this excavator that was just balancing on like the very edge of this pit that was slowly getting eaten away by the water. And we were like, <laughs> oh man, there's no way this thing is going to, it never fell in, unfortunately. No. But it was like, <laughs> it was like three days where they just, nobody moved this excavator and it just was, it looked like it was going to fall right into the pit. It was just terrible. Yeah, it was definitely uh, like listing to one side quite often. I'm sure those things are back heavy though, with all like the engine weight and stuff. So I'm sure that they, uh, you know, I'm sure it, mean, it could yeah, balance but... more on the back of the treads than the front. You know what I mean? But... I don't think they float though, so... No, I, they definitely don't. <laughs> the pit was like, yeah, it was crazy. So they're like... <laughs> walk across this construction site to get to your house and we're like okay sure no problem by the way we're gonna put a 10 foot pit with no <laughs> fence on it and there's like <laughs> 10 feet deep of water in this thing like it was like it was filled up with water and just you know if you went in it you and you couldn't swim you were drowning and it was like that dirty yeah, gross there. like i don't know where the bottom is construction water and it's probably right. full of like you know everything that could kill you steel and all that you know <laughs> pieces of like broken metal and all that stuff so Oh, yeah, that was a good yeah, time. Was fun stuff. Yep. <laughs> and then there was the the there was the train. So we lived next to a train track. Um, and the trains didn't really go by. It was like a freight track or something. Yeah. I don't I don't know what it was for. Yeah, it wasn't that frequent. It wasn't no. That frequent. But whenever it did go by, the whole house <laughs> would be just violent, like just shaking everything. And uh, yeah, it was pretty good. It was rough. It was a uh, very interesting area to live in. That's for sure. Yeah. I'm trying to think what other what other ridiculous stories we have in that i mean we lived in that house for like what four years three years something uh, like, like that yeah yeah like three years three, yeah. oh man just got knocked out I by the tree out. weird <laughs> um what other crazy things did we do in that house i mean the 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 late night moped coffee runs donut yeah. runs <laughs> oh there was the time i mean this wasn't really i, I guess this wasn't really related to that so remember you rented so the house didn't have a garage, right? No garage. Yep. And uh, it was like, I don't know. Like, we had like a back parking area that we had to share with the mm -hmm. people who lived downstairs. Although for the most of the time we were living in this house, nobody lived downstairs. There was this one like guy yeah. who moved in and he was like a, a real dingus and screwed yeah, like over a, frat, a bunch of stuff. Frat and, guy. <laughs> yeah, and broke a bunch of stuff. He was not a good, not a good dude. Anyway, so no one really <laughs> lived in this house except for us for like the longest time but we had C cosmo rented a garage at one point yep not too far away just, just like wrenching my bikes and stuff yeah so you could work on his bikes and stuff like that and i think you had like a buddy you shared the rental with or whatever yeah that's right and um we uh i i brought my car there i had this yeah, your park yeah that's right i, I had this, this really one. bad see as soon as i t start telling the story he knows where the story's going he's like oh I <laughs> but i had this car and it was this car was notorious i actually played golf with the guy i bought the car from a, a while ago which was kind of funny but anyway he this car was like notorious it was a 2004 chevy optra okay which is it's like a four-door sedan it was a five-speed stick shift it had a two liter four cylinder engine and this thing would not die. It did not matter no, what you did. It was, it, would, a tank. it was just, it would not. I snapped the axle on it once and it was just like, I'm fine. Let's go. Like, well, it was I'm pretty just, sure the axle snapped because. Well, because oh, of the this. The story that you're about to tell. Yeah. yeah. So, so I park it at Cosmo's garage and then we were in there and whatever. It's like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night. We're like, all right, let's go home. So I, we all get back in my car and we start going home and I'm driving. And every time I get above like 60 kilometers an hour, it starts to have this like really weird wobble. Death wobble, yeah. And I'm like, what, what is going on? Why is it wobbling? Turns out, while we were parked at Cosmo's garage, some dingus backed into my car and completely bent the rim on one tire. Like completely bent it like inwards. So the whole rim on this tire was just completely gone. I had to get the rim replaced. And that's why over 60 kilometers, the one tire would quite literally wobble back and forth. So anyway, fast forward a little bit and uh, I'm at work. And uh, I wanted to leave work and I was in a bit of rush to leave because I was mad. And so I decided to do a burnout <laughs> with my car. And yep. <laughs> uh, I, I was in first gear with the clutch. I revved it up to like, I don't know, two and a half thousand, three thousand RPM. I popped the clutch to drop it. And uh, the front right 
CV joint, the front right axle just snaps in half. <laughs> Which, if you've never had that happen on your car before when you're about to burn it, it was basically like the squeal of the tires, and then you heard this, and then it just went ring, and the engine goes up to like 6,000 RPM because there's no, there's no force on it. The differential's putting all the weight to the, like all the power to the disconnected side, right? Yep. And uh, it just, you just hear this rattling, and it's the axle like inside the engine compartment just rolling around, right? Oh my goodness. So I got that fixed for, you know, a couple hundred bucks. And uh, after we fixed that, then the, the car was good to go. But I had, we had that axle. We actually took it from the dealer and, and kept it for a while. And uh, the axle that. was like completely bent. So we're thinking that the guy bent the axle when he hit the rim. And Quite uh, possible. Yeah. it was just a big, it was a, a nightmare. But anyway, that was, a, that was a fun time. That car was with us the entire time we were at that house. Yeah, a lot of fun snow drifting with that thing. And... Yo, we don't talk about that. That's not, I don't think you're supposed to legally do that. I don't, I well, don't. Well, no, we went to Mexico. Oh, right, we right. Mexico. We drove to Mexico for the yeah. Mexican snow drifting championships. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they no, had a I really big about... snowfall last year. So, right, I forgot. Uh, I mean, the... sorry. For the, the 2000, five, like, five, yeah. 15, 16, something like that. Yeah, I forgot about the Mexican snow drifting championships we took part in. <laughs> How could I forget? I remember this. This was, this was, we were too cool for GoPros back then because we could, you know, this was before the days of GoPros. So we had like yep. a, a camera taped to the end of a broomstick out the front window. Oh, <laughs> we did too. You remember yes. that? And yes. we were coming around this one corner. <laughs> there was this one like stop sign near this one. And I remember we were coming around this one corner and I'm like, ah, screw it. Let's just do it. So like you're in the one corner, you come in, you hit the corner like second gear. You know, you pull the e-brake, which on this car, by the way, the e-brake only worked on, like, the back left tire. The back right tire. Yeah. Remember that? The cable was, like, pulled. So it didn't work. So only the back left tire would actually trigger on the e-brake. And we come around this corner, just whipping the e-brake and pull back into the car. And there's this, like, old lady in her in her sedan. at the one, And she's just, like, staring at us while we go just around the corner. I don't know where the Tokyo Drift music comes yeah. in. Yeah. We're like, that's oh fine. Oh, my God, if you know. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, it was so bad though. We did such stupid things. So remember, we um, I guess we used to uh, we don't really much anymore because we were younger then. Don't get me wrong. Everything we did was legal. Okay, let's let's preface this by saying everything we did was legal. <laughs> don't come after say, us. Sounds like uh, you're about to say some shit. No, I was going to talk about <laughs> drinking. So we used to go to like this one this one bar, right? Yep. And Cosmo and I both kind of look young. We don't look like old people. No. Um, so we used to go to this one bar. And we got, we went there enough where like we got the, the owner knew us, like the owner, the manager, I guess you'd call it. Like he, he knew us. His name was Todd. You remember Todd? I remember Todd. Right. And so Todd had a drink called a Fruity Todd. A Fruity Todd. Yeah. Which was, <laughs> it, it doesn't sound nearly as bad as it is, but it was all right. It's called a Fruity <laughs> Todd. And we, we met this, we knew this guy so much. We weren't like alcoholics or anything. We would just, you know, we'd get home from oh, work and we'd be like, let's university go university students. <laughs> yeah, let's go out for a beer or whatever, you know, and have a beer and relax. And so we get to know this guy named Todd. And, and one night we go out to this bar and, I, I you know, it's it's relatively busy. So we're, we go and we sit up at the bar and the waitress asks for our ID. And then she starts giving us this hard time about her ID or something. I don't remember the full the full story about that. Do you remember what it was? I, I don't remember the full story, but she was yeah, she was being all like sketched out by. She us gave us a hard reason. time for something. I, I honestly don't yeah. remember. It was like a real and like abnormal. <laughs> like I uh, don't get me wrong. I have no problem with getting carded. I understand. I look young. I get carded all the time everywhere I go. And the drinking age of Canada is nineteen years old. But we get carded all the time. Yep. And I remember she was just being like obnoxiously annoying for some reason. I, I honestly couldn't tell you what it was, but it was something where it's like, this is abnormal. Like she shouldn't be like this. Right. And so rather than say anything, cause you know, Cosmo and I, we don't want to be confrontational. We just so like saw Todd in the distance and we're like, Hey Todd, what's up? And that's of course her boss. Right. And he just like waved to us. was like, Hey guys, how's it going? And then the, <laughs> like, the look on her face when she realized we knew her boss was like, Oh no, we are so screwed. Like, so but anyway, she was fine after that. Yeah. But like, yeah, we didn't like get her in trouble or anything. No, we, we were weren't just... like being, you know, malicious. We just want to let we her know. Like, like, yeah, so anyway, can we get our fruity Todd's? <laughs> yeah. It's like, we come here a lot. Like, please don't, you know, please yeah. don't be so mean to us type deal. That's please all we were really so going mean. for. <laughs> Oh man. We were living in that house when I met my girlfriend who I'm still with now to this day. And Cosmo's been with his girlfriend since like the dawn of time. I don't even <laughs> yeah, know. I don't I don't even think they've ever I think before we moved in together. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, before. long before we moved because you were you were still with her when we were um hanging out at my old place. My super yep. old place. Yeah. That's right. That was good times.
Feels like it feels like yesterday, but it's you know. it really does. <laughs> and then you realize it was like ten years ago. It was like yep. crazy. You know, it, it, we were like what? Um, I had I graduated school in that house, or yep. yeah, in that house. Yeah, I graduated yep. school and we were living in that house. I graduated university. We were still living there, and yep. we were still yep. living there when I was working full time. Um, after graduating. Which was funny because like we were still living like poor students, even though I was like making yeah, know, even though he, decent yeah, exactly. money. And it's like nah, we're just gonna live like poor students. It's fine. No big. We could could afford a better place, but nah, like let's just live in this piece of garbage, you know. <laughs> oh, the good. garbage story. The garbage story. We forgot about oh, the, the raccoons in the garbage. Yeah, that's uh, it's all you, man. <laughs> okay, okay. The raccoons in the garbage. Right. The um. We had uh, we had raccoons and they ate the garbage. Done. End of story. No, um, <laughs> we had like there was a legitimate raccoon problem. So we lived in a city. There's raccoons in like every city. It's not yeah. a big deal. And um, we were we basically had like every day we we'd have to put our garbage somewhere. And because it was like an upstairs and downstairs unit, um, there was no garage or anything. So like in my house, we have garbage bins in our garage. And, you know, we put our, our garbage bags into our bins, and then whenever the garbage truck comes, we put the bins out. So it's not a big deal. You don't have to worry about pests and critters, you know, getting into That's your right. garage. But at this place, we didn't have that. So the people in the front had to basically just put their garbage outside, like, on the front porch. There was nowhere else to really put it. Yep. And the raccoons would come and just eat all your garbage bags. Like, they not would eat them. Not just raccoons. <laughs> well, yeah, everything. Yeah. What was it? I came out one time, I... I went right back in because I came out one time and I saw a squirrel with a piece of ground beef hanging out of its mouth. And I was like, nope, yeah. not today, zombie squirrel, not today. That squirrel actually <laughs> killed the cow and took the beef straight from it that way. Like that's, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was bad. Like stuff would just eat your trash and there'd be a mess. Like every day you'd come out to a mess on your front porch. It was just, it was yeah. just terrible. And so we tell the landlord this, we're like, hey man. You need to do something about this garbage. Like even with bins and stuff, it doesn't matter. Like they'll they'll like break the bin open and get at your garbage, exactly. like because it's outside. So we said you need to do something about this like situation. Like you need to give us a place to put our garbage so we stop having garbage. Because the landlord, remember, he would come by and he'd complain and be like, "Why is there garbage everywhere?" It, yeah. And it's like, "Bro, we've been telling you like you know <laughs> the animals are eating it. What do you want us to do? Like sit outside with a shotgun? Like I'm like you know <laughs> like what can we possibly do? Right? Exactly." And so finally, he's like, okay, okay, I'll build a structure. Now, being the extremely intelligent genius man that he is. The stable genius that he is. The stable genius, yeah. He built, like, this <laughs> this wooden structure, <laughs> like a wooden, I guess you call it, like, a shed out back. Yeah. Uh, the door didn't close <laughs> properly. Now, no. generally speaking, if you're building, uh, you know, a, a building, I'm gonna, uh, as an engineer, I'm going to tell you guys this. This is a really, really good engineering, uh, intelligent pay attention take notes kids this is important take notes. <laughs> if you're an engineer and you're designing a structure to keep things out the door must work okay the that door is, must close the door must close <laughs> it is very important write this down kit you won't get this knowledge anywhere else the door must in fact close in order for it to keep the critters out so of course on this building the door did not close nope and not thus it did literally nothing so the very stable genius that he was um <laughs> told us that it was clearly our fault that the raccoons right. were still getting into the structure. We must not be closing the door properly. Mm, that's right. On this door that did not close. It was very Im impressive. The yeah, uh, it, like didn't latch. All the hinges were like listing so that yeah. it would it would literally like want to open by itself all the time. Yeah, and it wouldn't latch <laughs> close properly, so you just couldn't do anything no. about it. So it basically was just the most useless useless piece of equipment I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, very stable genius. Uh, the raccoons, <laughs> the raccoons did not leave us alone. We were still. Nope, they were still. In fact, they were happy. They had a nice, uh, you know, nice little room, like to covered eat all area the to eat their now. garbage in. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, <laughs> like, oh, thank you. They're thank like, you, oh, sir. thanks for giving us a rain structure so we can now eat our garbage without yeah. getting wet. <laughs> really, really appreciate it. That deck was terrifying as well. Oh yeah, so we move in, right? We move in on the second floor, and. There's a deck. Sorry, there wasn't a deck to begin with. Well, there, it was <laughs> rotted, but it existed. There was a drop, yeah. yeah so the whole deck was like, what well, we move in, the landlord's like, I wouldn't put anything on the deck if I were you. That was his we're suggestion. Like, oh. It wasn't like, don't use the deck, just don't put anything on it, including yourself. So you could use it as long as nothing is ever on it. That is, That was his basic instruction. 
and uh, long story short, uh, yeah, it was real sketchy. So it took him like a year and a half, two years to finally get around to fixing it. Mm -hmm. um, and then he and then he did and, and had somebody rebuild and it was all. But yeah, when we moved in, the deck was like it was like three yeah. wooden poles holding it up, and not a single wooden pole was like even touching the ground anymore. <laughs> Well, I remember when he was taking out the foundation, the concrete foundation for the, like, the deck. Yeah. It was like, like, there was just, like, empty space under, underneath one of them. There wasn't even concrete. Yeah, it's so... like, bro, I'm, I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not, I might not be an engineer, although I am, but, like, you know, it, uh, I don't think that's how that works. It's not supposed no. to look like that. <laughs> the worst part was the, our very stable genius was an engineer as well, actually. Yeah. Wasn't he chemical no electrical Software? he was an electrical oh engineer. electrical that's right yeah the worst kind of engineer right there for all you electrical engineers out there all you kids thinking about going into electrical engineering i hate you already that's, that's... oh my god <laughs> be yeah. nice <laughs> the electrical no electrical engineers electrical the reason i'm mad about electrical engineering because yeah. it was like the hardest hard course in university it. it was like the worst yeah, hard time with it. yeah you have to we, in, in like first year or was it second year you have to like take all these other engineering courses like a little bit of chemistry a little bit of you know, electrical nonsense oh, and a no. little bit of this, a little bit of that. And the electrical engineering stuff was just, it was just god awful garbage. That was the well, worst. Well, here's the problem, right? So there's like, when you're in high school and you're picking out what program you want to go into, right? You open up the brochure and it's like, you know, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, software engineering, chemical engineering. And you're like, well, you know, I'm interested in mechanical engineering. That's what I've been wanting to do, you know, my whole life. Right. And then you go and you study mechanical engineering and you find out that you're it's literally not what learning you thought. every yeah, it's 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 not nearly what you thought. Yeah. And you're learning all this other stuff that your brain isn't wired to understand yeah. nearly as well as people who actually chose to take those courses. Yeah, I mean, there's a bit of that. There's also like um And I understand some of it is very necessary knowledge because you need you need to know some electrical stuff in order to intertwine your mechanical knowledge with it to build things, right? But yeah, I, I mean, part of the part of the problem I think with uh, with electrical engineering, well, not electrical engineering, just that the the base engineering programs in general is there's there's a very um, there's a very big disconnect between what you know, let's call practical engineering, yeah, um, Real life and, and theoretical <laughs> engineering. And there's a lot of kids who take an engineering course and they're really good at learning from books, like really, really good at learning from books. And then they get out into the real world and they're like the world's worst engineers you could possibly imagine. Like they can't, yeah. they can't, you tell them a hammer and a nail and they don't know what a hammer is type thing. Well, that's just it, right? The problem with the program that you and I did is that, you know, yeah, great mechanical engineering, but those people like have never seen the underneath of, of a car. Like, uh, of like a hood before or a yeah, car you know, they've exactly. never held a screwdriver in their hand yeah you know, like i personally know a chick that graduated with a 100 percent average in our program which like as you know is pretty mental you know yeah um and she wasn't able to get a job for like like legitimately five years because just zero practical knowledge you know yeah, yeah. sure you you can recite everything in the textbooks but if you don't know how to apply it, that's yeah. There's a, there's a, story. and there's definitely a, a disconnect there on the, on the engineering side of things, which I think is um, you know, it gets lost. Uh, you know, and and personally, I always thought I was a little bit more of a practical engineer. Maybe not so much as Cosmo. I was just gonna say that. Yeah, like I'm. Um, Cosmo is is the suit. kind of guy who can you know take apart a car engine and put it back together. Um, and and no one gives him credit for it. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't work in real life the way it works in a textbook, and that's I think the biggest issue. Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna go get some paint, and then I'll be back, nice. and then you Good. can show so. me what you did. I didn't really do much; just built some platforms this episode. But you know, <laughs> that's kind of what I did. Yeah, I guess yeah, that's it true. Need to be done. We didn't have yep. uh, got rid of a lot of the wood, which is great. That's true. I cleared that's out true. a lot of wood, and we still have so <laughs> much too. It's insane. Do we? That's good. Yeah, uh, Cosmo. What's up? So I've got some paint. Okay, I'm collecting paint as well. Uh, I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna need you to stop right now. Hey. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to come running towards me with guns. Lots of lots of guns. I have three red guys chasing me because I went to our like oh, the red guy force, and all three of them are chasing, and they won't leave me alone. I've been running for so long. <laughs> I'm like they're chasing me through the desert. I'm gonna make sure I don't bring them to the okay. gas station. I'm gonna avoid that. Give me a but sec. I need, I need guns. I need lots of, you know that scene from the Matrix where he's like, I need lots of guns. I need yes. lots of guns. 
I'm like okay. running out of water, but if I stop to eat, they're gonna catch up. Like I'm scared. I'm very Give oh, me. there's an oil pond here. Look at this. This no. is a nice oil pond, and it's nighttime. Oh my yeah, god, guys! That's the best. <laughs> leave me alone. Just give me a sec. <laughs> no, <laughs> go away. Dude, they're still uh, just like, they are hauling, bro. These are guys, they? These guys are, okay, I'm going to jump off this cliff. Aha, you can't jump off a cliff. Aha, <laughs> you stupid. Now they're all shooting at me. Well, I can shoot back. Oh, uh, one guy yeah. fell off the cliff and knocked himself out, but he's going to be coming for me. Oh, no. The other two jumped off the cliff. Oh, no, they're jumping. They're running. They're jumping. <laughs> Eat the banana! Eat the banana! Bananas don't give you- No, I didn't finish eating the banana! Eat the banana! <laughs> Need the moisture! Bananas okay. don't give you enough moisture! On my way back to base. Oh, they stopped. They stopped. Okay, they stopped. That's good. Now That's you're all good. dead. One at a time, you're gonna die. Here we go. Perfect. Get back here. Die, die, die. I didn't bring my good guns either. Alright, you're clearly gonna die. Come on, dude. Die, man! I'm not working out. Die! For you. <laughs> Okay, sick. Sweet. He's dead. <laughs> I'm gonna eat some tomatoes. Perfect. Where, uh, where are the rest of them? The other two are up, up here. You brought the bobcat. I said bring guns. You brought the bobcat. <laughs> I was out in the bobcat. <laughs> oh, what were you doing in the bobcat? Collecting flowers. Oh, okay. Well, I got, I got a bunch of flowers. I'm coming back now. I just okay. <laughs> need to. What's up, boys? Look at these two. These two. They chased me for so long, dude. It was insane. Do you have enough spuds? Uh, yeah. I probably should have checked that before I started shooting at both. But yeah. Probably, probably. Hey, hey, turd. Uh, you gonna you gonna come help or? Oh, I, I need my guns. You did? You dropped your spud gun off? I don't have any spuds on me. Oh my god. Well, I got two chasing me again. I I wasn't prepared to fight two red bots. <laughs> I wasn't either. But this is the story where this is where we're at. I guess we should be. Yeah. <laughs> Oh god, right. they're I'm at right base. on me. I'm gonna grab some ammo. Yeah, I'm about to die. I just gotta never stop running. Okay, guys, listen, listen. We're gonna play ring around the oil pond. I'm coming, I'm coming. Aha! They both went into the oil, like, oh my god. Does that kill them? <gasps> no! But it's the what biggest happened? exploit in the world. They can't get out of it? It's so, remember oil ponds are like super deep? Yeah. They're like super deep and super steep. They can't climb out of that. They can climb oh out of God. shorelines, but they can't climb out of the oil pond. They both are at the very <laughs> bottom of the oil pond. That's hilarious. And I can just sit here shooting them. And they it's so deep, they can't even shoot their like gun up. Right. <laughs> this is the okay. biggest exploit ever. Alright, I'm coming. I All right, well, they're, they're, I'm, I'm literally shooting them through the no, oil. No, don't kill them. I want to see them. I want oh, to okay, see I'll them. leave one. I'll leave one. What All up? right, bro. Oh, don't no, don't oh, get the oh, bobcat oh, no, in there. Oh, no, oh my god, oh, no. dude, 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 dude. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know if that bobcat thing doesn't have brakes. <laughs> yeah. Don't uh, don't get that in there. Look, look. You see him? It's hard to see. You gotta like. You see him? So hard to see him. He's down no. there. If you swim down, you'll see him. Look. Oh. oh, oh. Hey, buddy. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, he's gonna shoot wow. at us. He's gonna oh, he try. can't shoot. No, just like can't. we can't shoot underwater, he can't shoot underwater. So he's literally just screwed. That's funny. I'm gonna kill him though. So you can shoot from above the water into the bottom, but you can't shoot from- I don't from... even know where he is. Uh, right there. Okay, I got him. There we go. Alright, got him. Nice. I think. Is he dead yet? Oh, he's dead, there he's dead. Go. He floats. Do you see that? When he starts dying, yeah. he floats. How are, are you, you uh, uh how are you doing on the base upgrades? We got some paint making now. Nice, nice, that's good. Yeah. That's good. That's probably the only thing that I'm missing uh for you just need this, to paint. this time around, yeah. Okay. Um other than that, I mean I think you know, I think this is a good place to show off what we did. Okay. Yeah. You wanna you can come upstairs to where I am right now. I'm working on the uh, I'm in the clothing room. Coming. This is the, this clothing is the... room, that's fancy. Nice, nice. Oh, very nice. All right, so that's it's nothing. So cool. It's nothing fancy. It's just got some lighting. But if you stand on the platform and then press E on the use the wardrobe, it's like a good very distance cool. to give you like a nice, nice camera. Cool I'll, I'll stand next to you and use it too. Look at that. So you got nice. the nice cameras. That's awesome. The tree kind of gets a little bit in the way with the leaves and stuff, that's but okay. I I tried to find the best spot where it's like gives mm -hmm. you a good view to see everything. And uh, then, of course, awesome. we've got all these bare wall spaces just so we can store, like, our clothing boxes, right? We can slap them all cool. up, and then... 
I once think we that, get it full, nice. we can do a bunch of clothing. That's awesome. Yeah, so I actually used the warehouse wedges to do like a, like a. Oh yeah, thing. yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have a corner piece, but that's okay. Maybe we'll. Yeah, that's right. There is no out. corner piece. Yeah, but that's okay. Whatever. It's, uh, we'll just paint it yellow, call it a day. You know, no big deal. That's cool. That actually, um, it looks like it's a thick platform. Like it's got to hold some weight. I like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you made it hollow, I assume. It's not. It is. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, just okay. hollow underneath. So. I was like, if not, always... man, that's a good good use of wood. Oh, this looks sick. <laughs> yeah. This, so this is so nice, good. Like, it's so awesome. I love it. It's like a viewing area. Yeah, this looks um, amazing. It's like a viewing, you know, we might need to, we might need to put some paint or something at some point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. For I sure. really like this. This looks really, really nice. Put up some side. We should put up some like posters and stuff around here. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. It's the restaurant. This looks uh, great. Not a whole lot different here. You know, just a roof. We have a roof the now. roof is good. We needed a so, roof. Yep. You can still that. jump up on the counter, which is good, because this is how I feed exactly. the kick bots. <laughs> I mean, it's the easiest way to do it. You stand on the counter, you go across, you come back, right? Like, yeah, fair. that's fair the enough. way to do it. That's, I like that. It looks great. Yeah. And uh, you go up here, and there's another viewing area up top. Because I figured, you know what? We got this whole roof area. It's kind of way It's basically space, a platform, so yeah. Yeah, it's basically just a platform, you know, to... Come and eat your veggie burger and just reminisce about Scrap Mechanic life. The good old days. Good old days, yeah. Yeah, this is this actually looks really good now compared to that like nice. platform. These are these are both like really really like mm -hmm. almost complete now. This looks a lot better as well. I yeah, I like this. This is huge. This is awesome. I don't I know what to do spiral. here. We could I don't know. <laughs> dance. I don't know. Have, have a dance, dance? party. <laughs> Yeah. I will figure something out. Maybe we can store some things up here. You never know. Yeah, and then there's this one up here at the top. Nice, nice. Which kind again... Of, uh, there you go. I didn't go any higher. The other tree actually goes up to... So the clothing platform would be built up in that nook there. Right. On the other tree. But this one, like, this is the highest this tree goes. Which I think is, you know, is fine for now. I mean, Pretty I don't good, know. good, yeah. I mean, we can always... Yeah, there isn't really a reason to... We don't even have uses for all these platforms yet, you know? Like, it's like... <laughs> what are we doing? We're building platforms and we don't, I mean, that's, you know, maybe the comments can let us know, oh. you know, what we should use all these platforms for. They could tell us, you know. That's true. If you guys are, have any ideas, let us know for sure. Yeah, we do need to build bedrooms. So we could build bedrooms off of this big platform here. That's easy enough. Little person, although there's no reason for bedrooms, but, you know, it'd be cool to make this feel more like <laughs> home. There's no, you know, reason for a restaurant either, but Yo, at some point. It's cool from the bottom. Yeah. At some point, we could build bedrooms, but yeah, I don't know what else to build on this side. We've got lots of space for Activities. almost nothing. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Unless we build a walk farm up in the tree. This feels more like home now. I like it. Totally. This place is all empty now, too. Yeah. We can put something here. Yeah, this is empty. We've got rid of this over here. Like, this is actually mm. a clean, just weapons closet type thing. And That's right. I like the look of the restaurant from here. This looks really cool. Yeah, it looks nice. I like it. But yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. Um, give us other ideas for survival stuff to build. We still have some yep. ideas. We still got some. Yep, yep. We've got a list, but got a list we always love to hear what you guys think. So definitely let us know. Yeah, I like it. It looks. It lo actually looks like two different tree forts now. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If if walks don't despawn, maybe we should do a test at some point. But if walks don't despawn, I feel like having a tree fort walk farm might actually be kind of cool. Hey man, it would make sense. You know, have some walks for some milk right yeah. up at the top. Yeah, I mean you can't you can't breed walks unless you use mods, but at least we can right. you know get milk from them and then kill the walks down below for the no, steaks. No. Well, we gotta we gotta get steaks for revival baguettes. <laughs> all right, all right. That's the thing. We need walk steaks and walk milk, but like we could have milkers and we could have steakers, you know. <laughs> That's what they're called. Jesus. But yeah, let us know what you think, and we'll see you all next time. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. <laughs>